herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome, you made the trip to Gene Cannabis TV. We got a real treat tonight. We have a new friend that came in. I uh, answered my plea uh, to come on down and uh, Chelsea came down and here we are. So thank you and welcome Chelsea. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. I'm really excited to be volunteering down here. That's great, and I understand you're from Southern Oregon. And tell us what's going on down there, and how'd you get here? Why'd you? How, what brought you here? Well, in Southern Oregon, I had I founded a resource center down there that provided safe access to patients who um, had nowhere to go. Uh, they had a place in Medford, and that was about it. So um, I started down there, and decided with my husband that we would come up to Eugene uh, to be closer to Salem and uh, provide safe access up in Eugene. Uh, I'm part of the outreach committee on the advisory committee for medical marijuana, which is an advisory committee to the administrative office that runs the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. So being up in Eugene allows me to be available to go to meetings, and um, there's a lot of a lot of activists up here. So I'm yeah. I'm excited to be up here and um, help out any way I can. <clears throat> did you go to the meeting meeting in Portland? I did. Oh wow. Um, well, I was in Salem this oh, time. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So not as oh, far as the drive. Oh, that's right. Well, great. I, well, good. This is a real double bonus because we can get some information on that. I didn't make yeah. it. I didn't, and uh, our friend Perry Stripling, uh, Stripling. Uh, had it on a live stream yeah but I, I didn't even make it to that <laughs> oh, but okay. anyway so generally anything uh, shocking I mean uh, you know earth-shattering that happened there or anything real special well they talked about the fee increase which mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people are interested to hear mm -hmm. how that is going to play out mm -hmm. uh, basically the advisory committee is going to write a proposal for um, what they believe would be appropriate uh, right now just to recap what happened uh, a year and a half ago the fees increased from $100 to get your card to $200 uh, before if you were on Social Security disability or food stamps or Oregon Health Plan you could get it at a reduced cost of $20 and 40% of people who were getting their cards were getting it at the reduced rate, um, 39 of them being anything but Social Security. And what they did with the fee increase was that only Social Security income could get the $20 rate and everybody else got the $100 rate and then a regular rate was $200. So 39% of the people who previously had been able to get the $20 um, discount are now paying 500% more than what they were paying previous years. And on top of that, it costs an additional $50 if you cannot grow your own. And generally speaking, if you have a hard, if you have a disability you are not able to grow for yourself. So it seems like the sickest people are getting the worst end of the stick, the shortest end of the stick. So there was dialogue about the advisory committee being able to have some input on that and maybe <laughs> ease it for those people that need extra help. Yes, great. Uh, yeah, that, that, those price <laughs> raises were egregious. Uh, and they really blindsided us for that. Nobody knew that it was even coming. And we made it all the way right. through the legislature, all the way through the last session. We thought that we finally got through unscathed for a change. 
The administration didn't cripple the program like they keep try to every year, mm -hmm. and we made it. And then they blindsided us with the fee increase, and nobody knew it was coming. It was unstoppable. Right, and uh, Sandy oh. Burbank actually said that um, I forgot who was in charge at the time, but he deliberately did not tell them about it, so yeah. they could not have input. <laughs> That's that same piece of. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, he. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's the same one that uh, he was at the start of the program. And he, I uh, uh, can't remember her name, Kelly, it'll come to me. The first director, he pointed a, a director for the program that was incredible. She was fantastic, one of the best directors we ever had. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> but he didn't give her the resources to do the job, and then she didn't yeah. get, then she didn't, couldn't come do the job, so he fired, so he replaced her. Oh, wow. And that's the kind of rotten guy, you know. But anyway, so, well, that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, you and I know a lot of people in common, actually. I know we do, because. Uh, but uh, Todd Delato, for one, known Todd for many years. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's excellent, very well spoken. And he really is. In there, yeah. He will be the president again. They did their okay. their elections for yeah. that, so he'll be there again. Sandy Burbank, known her for years, but it has to her many times. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, she's she's incredible though. Yeah, she is. She is. And uh, yeah, the ACMM. It's advisory committee to the. As uh, Chelsea said, advisory committee to the. Uh, advisory committee to the uh, Oregon Medical Marijuana Board. And the thing of it is, <clears throat> they don't have to take the, take the advice. And that's one of the things right. that we're, we're kind of grumbling about now because they're not really listening to us. We ask them for something and, and we don't get it. It's like PSD for one. Right. We tried twice of that. Now we're going through the legislature. So, yep. uh, oh, that's all great you're here. This is great. We can really work <laughs> on that because there's a lot going on in Salem. It will be, yes. at, you know, and there's going to be rallies to Salem and all kinds of stuff. So this is great. Uh, so anyway, Southern Oregon. So you've been through all the feds and the the, sh oh, the anguish that they're causing down in Southern Oregon. Too. Yes, and um, the year that I was down there, they were hitting the growers extremely hard. Um, and recently, when the uh, Discovery Channel show came out, Weed Country, I think it's called. Uh, I saw all of those raids on TV, and I just wonder more so now if it's just for the money if they're just doing it to put a bad name on cannabis and there's yeah. already so much invested in in them raiding uh, people on the program they're not raiding anybody who was on federal land it was all growers that were registered within the OMMP yeah they're claiming that a lot of the medical marijuana is being diverted to the black market and that's one of the stories we're going to do in the next segment is uh, three people guilt, pled guilty. Uh, this is uh, Robert Dunham Hishimoto, the one you uh, heard of him. He's, uh, I haven't. Uh, med I see, Medford. Medford Mixed Art Martial Arts Trainer. Anyway, there's, they uh, they got busted. They had a, a grow on one guy's property and he was a grower and then there was a grow across the road on a neighbor's property but he wasn't okay. he wasn't uh, an OMPMP grower. Okay. And anyway, uh, they got connected them all together and they had a uh, they definitely were selling it. So Okay. Anyway, uh, so we'll do that one later, but uh, that's what's happened going on down there, you know. And and up here, uh, we had a local dispensary, uh, our our local uh, uh cannabism. Right. And uh, he was following rule uh, attorney's advice to mm -hmm. run that thing legal and yet they still busted him and they're right. still and they're going for him they're prosecuting him and this is by and this wasn't federal this is state is it? local narcotic yeah narc team yeah okay so <laughs> it makes it even more egregious you know but it is so anyway um yeah so you see a resource center uh, that's not moving we're really short on here we have very little actually going on right here right uh, are you familiar with Oregon green free yes a uh, little they have a local chapter here, but again, it, it's been I haven't had a meeting in six months. You know, okay. uh, there's a few people around, but, but just uh, not enough to keep a, or seem like to keep a meeting going. But yeah. I recommend highly everybody Oregon Green Free because they have the forums. Okay. And that way, they're really easy to get on. You get on the forum, and then you can communicate all over the state. You know, and I tell people, if you have any question or a problem or anything to do with medical marijuana, Oregon Green Free. There's a forum on there, and it's got you know. Is that the website where they have levels that you can join so you um, get a certain amount of access to their website and if you you get there's a free membership and you can get a certain amount of access? Yeah, I think I believe I think that's yes, I think so. 
I've been with them so long, and I'm grandfathered in. I, I don't know. I just go, <laughs> I, you know, so I'm not sure. But okay. I, but in fact, I didn't even know until a few years ago that they even charged for it. Okay. But it's a small charge for the forum, and I, and like you say, that could be very, very true. I, I don't know, but it seems like that does sound kind of vaguely familiar. So I think that might be, you know, maybe. Yes. Like that, but a great but resource to. But it is an incredible resource. It's patients helping patients. It's not a non I mean, it's not a thing. People are trying to make a buck. This is all people help people, and it's all nonprofit. You know, it's, awesome. it's uh, OregonGreenFree.net. You know. So. Okay. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> and then here locally we have the uh, Willamette Valley Normal chapter. Right. Uh, and uh, again, it's been fairly quiet. We just started reactivated meetings and, and gotten a few people coming in for that. Okay. And uh, uh, you guys meet, or I guess I'll be part of that now. Sure. So. Uh, certainly. <laughs> We'd love to have it. You bet. Uh, yeah, we don't even have a regular meeting place. Uh, we were meeting at uh, Cosmic Pizza, but we got skunked because there was a music program I didn't realize. Oh, no. and so. We ended up having to kind of move the meeting, but it worked okay. out well. We had a, one new person show up, but we had a great visit with the one new person. So, awesome. Yeah, you know, it's kind of just one, you just meet one new person. That's progress, you know. Yeah, every but, person uh, counts. Anyway, we meet uh, uh, on the fourth Saturday of every month, and, and like I said, we have been meeting at Cosmic Pizza. Okay. But uh, we are looking for uh, uh, a meeting place, so. Okay. Uh, we're <coughs> open for suggestions for that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, we meet once a month also at the Hemp Fest. Uh, yeah, the Hemp Fest volunteer group is also meeting once a month. So okay. everybody's welcome to that. And, uh, and when is that? That, that one, uh, the next meeting is this Saturday, uh, the 16th. Uh, it's at 420, coincidentally. Uh, and I don't <laughs> have the address on me, and I should, but you send an email to dankbagman at hotmail.com, and you'll get all the information and ask, I'll tell you anything you need to know. or. Okay. Probably more than you want to know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're awesome. just a bunch of actors here, and it's just uh, really uh, believe in the herb, you know. Yeah. And freedom. To me, it's a freedom issue. That's what I always come back to. Yep. It's a free. It's all about freedom. That's the whole bottom line. You know, Absolutely. I consider myself a freedom fighter. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, nobody should be in jail for a plant that grows naturally exactly. that yeah. is less harmful than any other substance that well, is so, legal. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the uh, Seattle Hemp Fest uh, came out with a CD, a DVD actually, showing how they did their, how they uh, put their show on and everything. Okay. And the name of it is No Prison for Pot. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. In fact, that's what <laughs> inspired us to do our Hemp Fest because uh, we were talking about doing a Hemp Fest and they, all of a sudden that DVD came out and we watched that DVD and we thought, uh, we thought, wow, these people are just like us, a bunch of hippies sitting out on the grass and they can do it we can't do so yeah. we've been it 11, 11 years now so when is Empress? that's the third weekend in july third weekend this in july. year that's the 19th the 21st and 22nd it's always the weekend after the oregon country fair okay it's the same date that condi <coughs> used to have his hemp fest uh, up in harrisburg uh, he had that date and we decided we'd just go with that date and keep that date so perfect uh yeah so we knew that and so uh three-day event we start on friday friday saturday sunday it's down at the uh, Alton Bay, or uh, Morty Jacobs Park, down across the Valley River at the end of the footbridge. Okay. Right on the river. Right it's on nice the river. Very nice, cool, green, lush, and so. Perfect for the summertime. It is. It definitely is, yes. And we're going to have a whole bunch of surprises coming this year, and uh, it's just going to be an incredible uh, event. So we're going to wrap it up, and we've got another segment coming. So, Chelsea, thank you for coming. Thank you and so much. We're going to see a lot more of Chelsea. I can see that. Thank you. Do you suffer from fear of losing your election? Are you terrified that voters will discover you've done nothing to improve their lives? Maybe it's time you talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex. In clinical trials, Incarcerex has been shown effective at reducing election-related anxieties by making voters think you're doing something about the drug problem. It's simplistic and fast-acting. If your problems continue or get worse, you can always double or triple your dose of Incarcerex. Whether it's addiction, therapeutic use, or just casual use, there's an Incarcerex plan for every American. Best of all, taxpayers, not you, will foot the bill. So talk to your spin doctor about Incarcerex today. Common side effects include loss of civil liberties, police corruption, racial injustice, increased terrorism, spread of HIV and AIDS, and violent crime. Bloated prisons are also a common side effect. Stop taking Incarcerex if bloating lasts longer than 20 years. If you're trying to balance the budget, keep families together, or protect human rights, Incarcerex may not be right for you. Do not mix Incarcerex with the Constitution or common sense. 
So start taking Incarcerex and keep pretending you're doing something about the drug problem. Welcome back. We're back like a bad dad. This is the segment two of our segment. You got Reverend Will here and you got Dank here and we are going to be talking about the story mentioned briefly in the last segment of three that uh, pled guilty to medical pot sales. Uh, <clears throat> a Medford mixed martial arts trainer and three others have pleaded guilty to conspiracy to sell marijuana from nearly 200 plants growing under the guise of the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program and diverted to the black market. <clears throat> this, uh, people down there that I know have told me that this, is, uh, this gentleman was uh, ripping off, uh, actually was a bad case of uh, ripping off uh, grower, I mean uh, patients, uh, taking their money, not giving them their medicine, uh, very, uh, and then he was selling it on the black market and they caught him red-handed. So uh, he says uh, they had a flyover uh, in 2011 and they, uh, it was 198 plants. Uh, and they checked and uh, you would see he was approved for 28 patients, which would allow 168 plants, but there were two gardens and one of them was on a neighbor's property. So uh, they weren't in complete compliance and, and they say yet uh, uh, they uh, found proof of, of federal sales. So anyway, uh, it says uh, he's, he was funneling the marijuana, he was growing to the black market for profit. So they say there's that, a lot of that going on, and of course there is some, but who knows how much. It's certainly not as much law enforcement as it says. Besides, the black market's what's doing it anyway. That's what's motivating it. Well, we don't mind them busting people who are ripping people off, but then we go back to high hopes, and we talk about what happened there with all the people who were legitimate card holders and stuff, which had a program and had it set up so that it was a model they were talking about for the congressman, the legislature, to come and check out. And then they waltz in there and totally destroy the plants, and all these people are now out of, have been out of herb for the whole winter. Hopefully they'll be able to grow this year. Yeah, I've forgotten how many farms were t taken down during that period, but yeah, High Hopes Farm was a, a model farm, and he showed it proudly to the legislatures. They complimented him on it, said it was, they were very impressed with it. Right, it wasn't us saying uh, that it was a model institution, it was Congress who was yeah. talking about how this is the way we would like to see it done, and they still came and took all their plants, so all these patients had absolutely nothing. Now to me, this is where I don't understand why ACMM is not standing up and telling the government you have no right to take this herb from these patients seeing as how they were legal and not having some kind of backup which is the one thing that we've been trying to talk to them about is when we have something like this go on where legitimate patients are trying to get herb and then you find out that these people were taking probably the best herb and selling it to people on the streets and giving swag to the patients we don't have anywhere to go to enforce that kind of support for patients. But then they don't care whether or not we get our pot in the first place. So it gets old, I'm telling you, it gets really old. And you know, to me, I tried to talk to the mayor about this just recently on Facebook and I basically got the same disrespect and discrimination that I've been talking about all along, considering this is supposed to be a discrimination-free zone it's really amazing to me that the mayor will not talk to me about how she is not respecting me, nor is her office, and to me that's discrimination. So, Miss Piercy, I would really like you to get a hold of me at some point in time so that I can actually have a conversation with you about the abuses that go on here and the discrimination that I've suffered at the hands of your office. So next was what, Oregon Marijuana Legalization Bill? Yeah, we got the bill. Oregon Marijuana Legalization Bill filed. A bill that would legalize marijuana possession and create a state-regulated system of legal marijuana commerce was introduced in the Oregon Legislature Monday. That makes Oregon the eighth state to either see such a bill this year or have one pending. The others are Hawaii, which is, that one's already dead, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Vermont. 
And the thing that I find just interesting is, is that, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of these states are on the right coast. <laughs> and we're on the left, we're the only one on the left coast at this point. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're the left coast. I always like that, left coast. <laughs> uh, House Bill 3371, also known as the Control, Regulation, and Taxation of Cannabis Act, was introduced by the House Committee of Revenue. As of Friday, it had yet to be assigned to a committee and was at the sen uh, Speaker's desk. The bill would legalize the possession of up to six plants and 24 ounces of marijuana on the premises of non-commercial home grows. The bill does not otherwise set possession limits that leads them to the Oregon Health Authority. Uh, the bill would also direct various state agencies to regulate, control, and tax marijuana commerce with the tax set at $35 an ounce. Marijuana commerce would include edibles. The bill would also legalize industrial hemp. Last year, a marijuana legalization initiative, Measure 80, was defeated at the polls, gaining 46.3% of the popular vote. Oregon cannabis are currently debating whether to move forward with another initiative in 2014 or wait for the next presidential election in 2016. The editor mentions here that presidential years are considered more favorable with respect to the type of voter turnout. Unquote. But Oregonians need not have to wait even until 2014 if the legislature acts on HB 3371. That's from Stop the War Drug, Stop the War, Stop the Drug War .org, I'm sorry, website, excellent website for information, by the way. Uh, and the inside deal on this is, yes, there is some debate on 2014 or 2016, but I'm told that the money is going on 2014, that they have several millionaires that have uh, pledged the money to do it, that they're going to run two initiatives. They've done... Uh, they're polling, they've done polling on six initiatives, and they're going to take the top two out of that, and they're going to run two initiatives, uh, and the funding has been pledged. So uh, the word is we'll have two initiatives on the ballot in 2014 in Oregon. Well, at this point, you know, I mean, I'm tired of waiting. You know that. I want legalization. I want it now. And, oh, yeah. you know, the whole thing is with the 46% of the vote that we had this time, we did that with no money. None. Okay, a million dollars and a couple million dollars or whatever to Washington and to Colorado, but we had no support and we just barely missed. So to me, my focus in this once again is spiritually. And so for me, when I'm talking about this, it's the consciousness here in Oregon that we're talking about. Okay, we don't have to buy our way into this, you know, go out and try and convince all these people who don't know about it. It's just simply telling the truth and getting the people involved in the process so that they feel a part of it. That's one of the reasons that I would like to have this TV show go to an hour so we could have people calling us so we could talk to them and make them feel more a part of this. But that all takes help, folks. And understand right now, Chelsea showing up earlier today is the first person that we've had here as a volunteer other than the people who have been working on this for the whole time that the show's been on. So Chelsea, I'm going to tip my hat to you, and hopefully other people will see that you know it doesn't hurt and you're not punished, hopefully, in this process. So, I mean, those are the kind of things that we're trying to do from this show, and we can do much more with minimal support. I understand we've had no support other than Kevin and Zener and Dank and myself. That's it, folks. So... In, if you really care, why don't you come on down and contribute? Be a cameraman, you know, learn how to run the cameras. Uh, go in the sound room and be able to work with the sound. These are things that some people sit at home and, you know, just like to play in their own arena. But you have all these toys here that are available. It sure would be nice to see you come on down and help us out. That's right. That's the Community TV 29 Studios behind Sheldon High School. That's a great organization, and it only costs $10 a year to join and to become a member. Uh, in fact, our board meeting, by the way, I forgot to tell everybody, the board meeting's tomorrow night. So, Well, understand uh, this, too. The Church of the Caring will pay the $10 for your first year here if you want to come down and join. Okay, that I've offered people before, and I'll do it again because I want you to see what this is like. And if you don't like being here, you shouldn't have to pay for it. So come on down, check it out. We're behind Sheldon High School, and we're very grateful that we're able to be here. You bet. So that's yeah, definitely. So the uh, invitation stands. 
want to do a quick word on the federal grant that's available. Uh, this is research on marijuana legalization in the United States. This is an actual grant that they're looking for funding, uh, looking to uh, award funding for. Purpose and objectives. In 2000, November 2012, voters passed ballot initiatives in the states of Washington and, and Colorado to legalize marijuana for adult recreational use. We know little about the impact this shifting marijuana policy uh, environment has had or will have on epidemiology, prevention and treatment of substance abuse, misuse, and related health outcomes such as HIV and other risk behavior. The National Institute of Drug Abuse encourages administrative supplements to research that will <clears throat> inform social behavior and public health impacts of medical of marijuana legalization of laws and policies. This funding opportunity announcement will provide pro will support projects with the ability to harness these quasi-natural experiments currently underway in the United States to ascertain the effects of these recent changes. Research topics may include, but are not limited to, health outcomes, i.e. respiratory illness, learning and memory, psychiatric symptoms, etc. Risk behaviors, i.e. drug driving, sexual HIV risk behavior, educational attainment, crime and frequency, monetization of prevention, inter uh, intervention outcomes, changes in state prevention policies, secondary data applications which utilize national or state level longitudinal or panel data are highly encouraged. Anyway, uh, and it goes Gotta on. Good. Our friend of ours is really sharp and did analysis here, and she sent out this two two line sentence. <laughs> Interesting and not surprising. NIDA wants to make sure that legal marijuana is not is as bad as they claim it is. <laughs> That's the object of this. So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out, but that is an actual uh, study that they. they in the meantime, we have people who have uh, dealt with dialysis for 26 years and they're watching all these people die around them and stuff, but, you know, they've gotten kicked to the curb in their process. This man has been threatened with having to move to Salem to get his dialysis and stuff. Now we have the people who are surviving cancer at this point in time. Understand, folks, if you really cared, you could make a difference, and we could make a difference as far as taking care of each other. So hopefully this will happen sooner rather than later, which would make me real happy. You bet. So if you have any questions, information, send an, and send an email to me, dankbagman at hotmail.com, and we'll uh, get the information to you. Uh, Hempfest uh, volunteer meeting this Saturday, the 16th. Details and we No, email. you can see us on YouTube as well. So make sure Thank that you, you yes. check out YouTube. It's Eugene Cannabis TV. You That's bet. That's all you, you got to type in, folks. If you can do that, then you can see and hear what we've got going on. Hopefully, it's only going to get better. You bet. So we'll see you next week. We're gone. <laughs>